Hi, I'm excited to present you my new book entitled Regenerative and Positive Impact Architecture. In this book preview, I will try to explain the content of this book so that you will get familiar with the content and what is it about. And I hope at the end that you will get excited, read it and order it. As I explained, the book title is called Regenerative and Positive Impact Architecture. It's a very timely topic. My name is Shady Atia. I am an assistant professor at the University of Liège in Belgium and I am a professor of sustainable architecture and building technology. Well, regarding the book, this book I've been busy working on writing it for the last two years and the main keywords that the book is exploring is mainly green buildings design, circularity in the building, in buildings, embodied energy, carbon efficiency in general, uh, the whole impact of building and the neutrality concept and definitely it's based on a scientific and evidence-based approach, which is the life cycle assessment approach. Well, the book covers very interesting parts related to the design, construction and operation of green buildings. And it's looking to a holistic approach regarding the sustainability in the building sector. As you can see, the book is not restricted only to energy and not restricted only to carbon, but the book is looking at different aspects related to the whole life cycle of a building. The book is looking at the consumption of material resources, the consumption of fossil resources, the different environmental impacts. And in the book, we did several iterations and different simulations with the 12 or 10 uh, indicators of uh, the impact of the buildings over the period of initiation, operation and uh, uh, operation. Also, the book is looking at the impact on health and finally also looking at the waste and pollution as aspects. And the book is tracing the different sources from mining, transportation, manufacturing to the construction site and to the waste management after the build is demolished. Well, the project or this uh, book is presenting real world built case, built case studies uh, based mainly on the concept of, of uh, regenerative design. We have in this building four state-of-the-art very interesting cases. We have a building which is the Enril building in the United States. It's a zero energy building. We have another building which is green offices in Switzerland. It is a Minergie Eco building uh, rated. It's in Switzerland. Very interesting case built also with a very low impact, uh, almost a positive impact. Then we have the case of the municipality of Venlo, the Netherlands. It is one of the first cradle to cradle buildings uh, that are um, constructed in the last uh, two years. And we have an, another uh, case study for a straw bale construction. It's a kind of social collective construction also built in the Netherlands. So around those four case studies, the book is exploring the, the latest uh, uh, evolution of the concept of circularity and uh, the concept of disassembly, the concept of prefabrication. It's not only focusing on energy consumption, it's also focusing on different aspects related to water, material, emissions in general, the impact in general. Well, the book is catering for a lot of practitioners working in the area of buildings, architecture and construction. The book focuses on practical issues that are relevant to building professionals with an with a, a in-depth background uh, in sustainability. Also, we are having a story to tell in this book. The book is positioned in the context of the universal discourse regarding climate change. So we are trying to position in this book our viewpoints for the coming 30 years. In fact, the world is facing serious challenges uh, and we are in transition period and this is obvious. We have problems and mega trends uh, stating carbon emissions problem, climate change problems, water problems, scarcity of resources in general, depletion of fossil fuel, uh, population growth, which is also a challenge, and urbanization. In this context, the book is positioned and trying to find a paradigm or position itself in a new paradigm that is trying to fix the earth. Well, since the book audience, the main book audience is uh, building designers and practitioners and architects, uh, engineers, uh, we, I looked at uh, the history, the modern history of sustainable or green architecture in the last years. And as you can see, we started early on in the 19th century with the work of Le Corbusier and the work of Frank Lloyd Wright when they were exploring issues related to organic architecture, hygiene in buildings moving to the Victor Olguy brothers 
uh, epoch in the 60s, 70s, uh, coming with the concept of bioclimatic architecture. So this is the first phase in the yellow uh, scheme here. Then we moved with Ian McCart's book, Design with Nature, in the era of environmental architecture. This did not last more than 20 years. Before we moved to the sustainability era, where we call it the sustainable uh, architectural era, when the uh, report of Brundtland appeared uh, around uh, 1948 uh, with the United Nations. And since that, we have been shorter and shorter living in the paradigms. Because uh, after that, we went into the resilience of architecture paradigm, which was related to catastrophes. And now we are in the last paradigm, which is the regenerative paradigm. We are trying to look at resilience with uh, the ability to uh, mitigate the effects of climate change and even keep the degrees less than two degrees uh, Celsius for the coming uh, 50 years, if we succeed to do that. Well, if we let uh, ourselves give a reflection on what's happening in the world, regardless of countries and nations, when we look at the planet overall, we figure out that there is an urgency of positive impact development. Why is that? Because as you can see in this diagram, just right after the oil embargoes in the 70s, we figured out that we need to invest in energy efficiency. So the energy efficiency paradigm started with us uh, at the end of 70s, and we continued work on that paradigm, but we figured out it's not enough to focus only on energy efficiency. Early in the 80s, mid 80s, the sustainability paradigm appeared, and we figured out it's more holistic, it's including other aspects, air uh, quality, water, materials, indoor environmental quality, and so on, and aspects related to the social dimension of sustainability, the economical uh, uh, dimension of sustainability. However, the sustainability uh, paradigm was not uh, the only paradigm that remained. What happened that we had a third paradigm that came after, which is the climate change. And as you can see in this kind of uh, uh, graph, on the x-axis, the years of evolution, and we can see since the 2010, 2015, we have a lot of certifications, the Paris Agreement 2015, not long ago. We have now a lot of regulation and mandatory codes requiring to reduce or even neutralize the impact on buildings. And what we are going in the coming years to look at, we are looking to have buildings with a positive impact because the planet is so damaged that we need to fix it. And as you can see, this is the urgency of our story in this book. Well, many people ask me, why did you use the title Regenerative Architecture in the book? The book title is called Regenerative and Posit Positive Impact Architecture. And the word regenerative means the ability to heal and rege regenerate itself without having a negative uh, uh, damaging consequence. And as you can see here, we have been worrying in the last years to reduce our negative impact tapping from fossil fuel and so on, and different uh, resources that are polluting, even the nuclear solutions. And then we went to going at low energy buildings and then ultra low energy buildings like the passive standards and so on, until finally we went in the paradigm of zero energy. And we figured out it's not enough because if we keep everything on the zero level, it's not an intelligent target because once we have a zero, already the, the, the climate or the planet is damaged. So we need to go beyond the zero and we need to go into positive impact. Well, if we design as close as possible, like nature is designed, looking at biomimicry, looking at the regenerative nature uh, of things that we find in nature, we discover that our built environment and our buildings, they need to have a positive impact and they need to be designed constructed, operated within a paradigm that is looking at the regenerative nature so that these buildings can go back into the nature without damaging. And therefore, we are using the word regenerative. It will be a very important word in the coming years. It's already important in many fields, including the medical field. But now it's also coming very strongly as a paradigm in the field of architecture, engineering and construction industry you will find different nuances of the word. Some people talk about circularity or the circularity in the built environment. Others talk about green uh, architecture, green buildings, sustainable buildings. But the word regenerative is a more a kind of a mother word that can group all these terms and it includes the word of smart buildings because by nature a regenerative building is smart. Well, the book is building on previous successful visions 
on how to address regenerative, the regenerative concept in our planet and in our built environment. And it's not only linked to these very important publications by very important visionaries. The book is already going beyond existing green building certification schemes such as LEED, BRIAM, DGMB, uh, the Green Star and so on. So the book is looking to the next challenge, to the next step. Where should we go? Assuming that we already achieved a kind of impact neutrality and therefore it's a very important book to look at what's coming next and how we have a heads up to prepare for the next step regarding our uh, future and the future of the built environment. Now talking about the content, the table of content, it took me a lot of time to build up this content because I wanted to make it highly logic as possible and easy to follow, unfolding the knowledge so that any person who has no in-depth knowledge can go easily, read the book and get to the depths of it. And as you can see, we have an introduction chapter in the beginning. Then I'm talking about modern history of sustainable architecture, like I explained earlier. And then we go directly in the definitions of our new regenerative paradigm while I compare the negative impact paradigm that we were working on which is under the efficiency concept and I'm working about talking about the positive impact paradigm which is more about the effectiveness uh, concept. Once in chapter 2 the definitions are determined and the terminology and the knowledge that we are sharing on the level of readership I move in the book talking about the principle of regenerative design. This chapter is based on several iterations in real case studies design that I've been working in the last five years on and I've tried to write the book in a way that helps designers in the first state to design regenerative buildings. So I start talking about the guiding principles of regenerative designs. I set up a framework what should be done in priority and this framework later on goes unfolds into design strategies and uh, design solutions for designers so that they can apply this framework and can translate easily the principles into strategies and the strategies into solutions and finally they have a concrete design uh, that can be called regenerative. Chapter 5 is looking at the evidence-based side of the design so I'm setting up the most important key indicators that are related to regenerative designs to be able to assess and evaluate regenerative architecture and regenerative buildings. I'm looking at indicators and metrics that can be used for the regenerative design in a very pragmatic way, in a very quantifiable way. And then I go directly in our case studies where we can tap in a lot of learned lessons, where we have four case studies like explained before. Uh, we have three office buildings and one residential building. So it's interesting to diversify between the commercial use and the residential use. And after, right after the case studies in chapter 6, I move to chapter 7, where I compare those case studies. And I use the same indicators and metrics that were developed in chapter 5 to start to assess those four case studies. Finally, I reach chapter 8, where I talk about the regenerative and positive, positive impact roadmap for uh, this kind of architecture and built environment that we are seeking to have in the coming years. I am summarizing the findings of the comparison and I'm setting a novel framework that was tested and validated among more than 150 architects to make sure that this framework makes sense and is logic and easy to follow uh, during the design process and the construction process of buildings. And finally, I share with you the learned lessons uh, of the book and the implications for the future. So this is the table of content regarding the book. And then if you want to know much about me, I'm just inviting you to uh, look at uh, my bio. I've been working in the last years as an assistant professor at Liège University. I'm responsible of a research lab called the Sustainable Building Design Lab. We are very busy with everything related to sustainability and buildings. I already authored a book entitled Net Zero Energy Buildings, Concept Frameworks and Roadmap for Project Analysis and Implementation. And I published more than 60 publications in peer-reviewed uh, journal and conferences and books. Some words about me. I have more also experience not only on the academic side. I work already like uh, as an energy efficiency and sustainability consultant. I, uh, I am lead accredited and I'm lead faculty and I participated in more than 18 projects about sustainability and certified green buildings uh, across different uh, countries. Well, 
Now, what will be the benefit to get this book and order it? Definitely the book offers a guide for engaging in energy efficiency and in high performance building projects. And I really advise that if you don't have an idea about what's the coming challenge that we are facing uh, in the planet regarding the built environment, the book offers you this guidance. The book also covers key areas for green buildings performance. So it covers the area of operational, uh, the operational phase of buildings, embodied energy in buildings, and I provide really interesting visual uh, guidance and key questions that can guide the design process during early stages looking at questions related on the selection of materials, uh, the selection of finishing, the life of materials and so on. And I provide at the end of the book a logical framework that helps designer to take the decision in an informed way and in the same time analyze existing project within an environmental context so that there is a way in a standardized methodology to design buildings and in the same time assess them and I'm focusing on the construction systems making a very important playing a very important role today in the future of regenerative buildings construction systems then looking at the design elements that should be included and finally moving and focusing on the building materials and products level one of the issues that are very difficult in our field is that many uh, engineers approach our uh, approach sustainability in the building sector from a micro scale level so they are focusing on materials and recyclable materials circular materials regenerative products while in a context of architecture and design we should look at the larger picture and focus first on the main principles of design starting with the construction system moving then to the design elements that will add quality will bring a good design to uh, function and then finally we can pick up and select the most appropriate and regenerative products and materials. So the framework is uh, explaining how to use the book, how to do designs and it's explained in the book in a way that can be helpful for uh, readers and for sure as I mentioned the book combines solid grounding in core concept uh, for this subject so the person who will get through the book will be knowledgeable about the most important concept in this area uh, concepts related to carbon efficiency uh, with also a wider context that includes the technical and socio-cultural and environmental dimension and this is one of the learned lessons that I myself learned during the development of the book it was very exciting to read the book because also while I'm writing the book I learned something that was came out from the uh, post-occupancy evaluation we did for the uh, four case studies that the social cultural aspect is very important the human interaction the occupant behavior uh, the occupant satisfaction the social acceptance uh, play a major role and if we are going in the direction of regenerative architecture regenerative uh, built environment we must include uh, users and we must focus from now on on occupants also, the book presents best practices for those who are interested on the latest trends and the best practices and learned lessons based on our four uh, worldwide state-of-the-art examples in Europe and North America. If you are interested, you can order the book via Amazon or Springer. The uh, publisher of the book is mainly Springer. You can also find it on, online or find it from your local library. It depends on your location. So I'm inviting you to order the book, to read the book, and if you have any questions, any engagement, don't hesitate to engage directly uh, through the, this video on the comments below. Finally, I thank you for the attention and I invite you again to order and read my book in your library, academic library, uh, office library, or even for your personal library home. The, title book, the book of the title is called Regenerative and Positive Impact Architecture. Thank you for your attention.